Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Carraza, and I'm here outside on my front porch today, and I'm excited to talk to you some more about how God always keeps his promises. Last week, Miss Holly and Fiona and Helene talked to you about how God changed Jacob's heart to help him love God and obey him. And we're going to talk more about that this week, too, about how God changes people's hearts. God likes to change people's hearts so that they can love him and obey him. It's all part of how God keeps his promise to Abraham to fulfill um, his promise to give Abraham many descendants. And from all of those children that God would give Abraham and then Jacob, that one day he would save the perfect king, the perfect savior, who would change all of our hearts so that we can love God and obey him and live with him forever in heaven. So we have an exciting story today. But I was thinking this time of year is um, autumn or fall, and there's lots of changes all around us, aren't there? Leaves change color, uh, which is so beautiful. The the colors change and they're orange and red and yellow and that's so pretty but this year especially with Thanksgiving coming up next week things have changed a lot with um, COVID-19 um, maybe Thanksgiving isn't going to be the way you normally have it maybe you're not going to travel to your grandparents or other family members maybe they aren't going to travel to you so there are lots of changes and God knows that um, but he always keeps his promise it doesn't matter what changes in the world or in your family or your home um, or your neighborhood or your church God keeps his promise in spite of changes that are around us in our world. And we can be so happy and so grateful and so at peace um, because God always keeps his promise. So I'm gonna pray for us right now and then we will go and get our Bibles and hear our Bible story. Dear Lord, we love you and we thank you that you are always um, watching over us and that you will always keep your promise and that you kept your promise to Abraham and to Jacob and that you did send Jesus to be our perfect king and that you change our hearts so that we can love him and believe in him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, boys and girls. I'm inside now sitting at my dining room table and I realized that I'm kind of hungry and I wanted to have a little snack before I started our Bible story. And so I noticed that here on my table I have a beautiful bowl of apples. They're honey crisp apples. Do you see how beautiful they are? How shiny? And they smell really good too. They smell sweet and apple-y. And I thought, my tummy's hungry, I'm gonna have a snack. And each apple is beautiful. Look at the colors God put on that apple. Red and yellow and shiny clean. I thought, I'm gonna have an apple. And it doesn't matter which one I pick because each apple appears to be beautiful on the outside. They look beautiful. Their outer appearance is beautiful. So I just picked one and I cut it open. And here's the beautiful apple I picked on the outside. The outer appearance, the way it looks on the outside, is shiny and beautiful. Not a thing could be wrong with it from my eyesight, from the way I look at the outside. But then I cut it open and look, look can you see? Yucky brown spots. Yuck. That doesn't look like the beautiful outside appearance, does it? No. So I think I'll choose a different apple for my snack. From the outside, it looked yummy, but from the inside, yucky. And then I thought, that really makes me think of our Bible story today. Because in the book of 1 Samuel, which is in the Old Testament, and chapter 16, it says man, which is 
me too, even though I'm a lady. Man, when it, it says man in the Bible, it means everybody, human beings. Human beings look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So that's exactly what happened with these apples, isn't it? I looked at the outside of the apple and I saw shiny, beautiful red and yellow apple that I wanted to eat. But when I cut it open and I saw the inside or the heart of the apple, it was not so beautiful anymore. It had yucky brown spots that made me not want to eat it. And that's what this Bible verse is telling us, that on the outside, the part that human beings can see Someone might look shiny and beautiful and just perfect, but God can see inside of us to our heart. And in the Bible, the heart stands for what is our soul, what is the part of us that can love and worship God. And so God can look inside of us and see whether or not our hearts can worship him. So, that's what our story is going to be about today, and it is from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16. So why don't you get your Bibles and find 1 Samuel. It's in the Old Testament, and we're going to be reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 16. Let me tell you about Samuel. Samuel is a prophet, and he started serving the Lord when he was just a small boy. And he grew up to be a very important prophet for the Lord God. A prophet is somebody who God tells messages to, and then he, the prophet tells those messages to the people. And we don't have those kind of prophets anymore um, in our time because we have God's Bible. We have the whole Bible that tells us what God would want us to know. But in Bible times, long, long ago, before the whole Bible was written down, God used prophets like Samuel to tell his people what he needed them to know. And so today we're going to hear a story about the prophet Samuel um, and how God used him to find a king. The Lord was always with Samuel. Samuel loved the Lord and listened to him and obeyed what he said. When Samuel was an old man, the Lord said to him, Samuel, I want you to go to Bethlehem to the house of a man named Jesse. I have chosen one of his sons to be the king of Israel. I want you to go and anoint that son with oil to be king. When Samuel got to Bethlehem, he went to Jesse's house. And he consecrated Jesse and his seven sons. And he said, and he invited them to worship the Lord with him. And Samuel met Jesse's oldest son. And he said, oh, this son is so tall and so handsome. He must be the one the Lord has chosen to be king. But the Lord said to Samuel, I'm reading from the Bible, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things a man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That was the, the verse that we talked about when we looked at those apples. So God was looking inside the hearts of Jesse's sons to find the one he wanted anointed to be king. Samuel could just look on their outside and see tall and handsome young men, but God could look inside and see their hearts and know the heart he had changed to be the one to be the king of Israel. So Samuel just kept looking at Jesse's sons. There were seven, and he looked at them one after another, from the oldest down to the youngest. And each one, God rejected. They were not the one that he wanted Samuel to anoint. Finally, after the seventh son went by, 
Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Are, all, are these all the sons that you have? And Jesse said, well, there is still the youngest. Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. And then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So David was brought in from the fields where he was tending the sheep. And Samuel poured probably olive oil from the horn of an animal onto David's head and anointed him king. Because God had looked and seen his heart and changed it to worship him, and God wanted him to be the king of Israel. To help you remember that God chose David and gave him a heart of faith to be the king of Israel, um, you could make a lamb today. I think maybe Miss Holly put a lamb in your um, lesson this week that you could print out. A lamb will help you remember or a sheep will help you remember that um, David was chosen when he was just a shepherd boy out in the fields, but God could not could look into his heart and know that he was the one that he wanted to choose. And on it, I wrote the verse, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. That's how I did my sheep. Virginia, my granddaughter, decorated hers beautifully with markers. So you can... You can choose how you want to make your sheep to remember that David was God's chosen king and that one day Jesus would come and be our savior and that Jesus rules over us today in heaven and keeps us safe and secure. So just one more thing today, boys and girls, is our catechism, which is question nine. And I will read that to you. The question says, what does God require in the first, second, and third commandments? And the answer is, first, that we know God as the only true God. Second, that we avoid idolatry, and third, that we treat God's name with fear and reverence. That means that we don't um, throw his name around carelessly. We don't swear with his name. Um, we use his name when we're praying or when we're giving him praise or worship. are talking about his promises or the great things he has done. That's what using his name with fear and reverence means. And then last week, Fiona and Helene gave you a challenge to learn verse 8, which is all of the Ten Commandments, I mean, Catechism 8, which is all of the Ten Commandments. And I thought I would end my time with you today by showing you, um, including a video of how some little kids learn the Catechism. And it doesn't have to be sitting at a desk or a table like you're at school. It can just be casually in your beds or your car or walking around, anything you want to do. And I would love to see videos of how maybe you and your family learn the catechism. And make sure you ask your moms and dads to help you because it's fun to do it with your mom and dad. And I hope you'll see that in, your, in um, the video today. I love you, boys and girls, and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and that I see some of you um, at church this Sunday. And if not, I'm thinking and praying for you. What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? Um, you shall I have no other God for me. You shall not. 
piece of fire. You shall not miss. Eat what's left. Remember. The Sabbath day you keep up holy. Honor. Word of honor. You shall not. Mm -hmm. Murder. Mm -hmm. Murder. You shall not commit. Adultery. You shall not. Steal. You shall not give. False testimony. You shall not. <laughs> what does God require in the first, second, and third commandments? First. Mm -hmm. At we know I got it on to God. Second, that we but all the strategies. Third, that we treat God's name, fear, and reverence. Wash and 